30 on August 13th, and this is the August meeting of the Southwest Vermont Union Elementary School District. Uh, before we start anything, I'd like a motion to amend the consent agenda to include the following non forms. We have nomination forms for Dorothy Eckert uh, to take a position at Bennington Elementary as a fourth grade teacher. We have a non form for Marissa Sikowski um, for, as, to serve as a part teacher at the Tunnel Building. We have Sarah Rogers uh, for a behavior interventionist at Ben L. We have Kim Bush as behavior intervention specialist at Shaftesbury. Judy McInerney um, as an elementary as a trauma sensitive elementary teacher to serve the entire district. Sarah Wajda, Bennett Elementary Library and Media Specialist. Keanu Gates as a district wide school social worker. And Ariana Macy to serve Molly Stark and Woodford as a music teacher, and Carol Schumann's uh, to serve as a, as a trauma sensitive classroom teacher to serve the entire district. So, could I please have a motion to amend the consent agenda to include those nomination forms, please? So moved. Thank you, Dick. Could I have a second? Second. second. Thank you very much, Tony. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of amending the consent agenda as outlined in that manner, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Uh, I would also entertain a motion, please, to amend the consent agenda under warrants. There are a number of warrants that uh, Director Gordon has for us that were stemmed from the now defunct school districts, all of which were approved by those school districts, but need to be executed by the by this existing school district. Uh, so since all of that business has already been approved, I would simply entertain a motion to amend the consent agenda to include those warrants under number two of the consent agenda, please. So moved. Thank you, Angie. A second, please. Second. Thank you, Dick. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, it passes. All right. So, are you ready to kick off for public comments? Any members of the public wish to say anything? All right. Moving on. The consent agenda, um, as we just went through. Uh, any? Can I please have a motion to approve the consent agenda, please? So moved. Second. We'll call Angie and Dick. Any discussion on that? Curious. Yes. Um, just to clarify for my own thought, I'm signing also signing a Bennington warrant and yes. a Shaftesbury warrant. Yeah. So okay. I, yeah, yep. yeah, I reached okay. out to the auditors and he confirmed that now that this board is operational and taking over the operations of the once operational individual districts that you can sign on behalf. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say, I don't know that we're there. Could I, we do have a motion to approve that consent agenda. Thank you. Uh, so all those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the consent agenda passes. All right, so next up, item number three on the agenda is the finance. Uh, so the treasurer's report has been posted. Any questions about the, tre the treasurer's report? Hearing none, uh, that's it. As I was just informed by our superintendent, uh, the treasury report is not actually an actionable item. It's just something for us to discuss in the war note. So it is what it is. So we'll take it from there. Uh, agenda item four, policy. So we have one policy to adopt and another to warn. Uh, the first to warn is the student eligibility for athletics and co-curricular activities uh, as the, the current designation is 6330. Thank you, Thank you very much, Dick. Second. Thank you, Angie. Any discussion about warning policy 6330? Here is. Yes. If this is the, the place where some of our corrections or additions are done, sure. um, this policy only really concerns middle school and high school, and there's no reference at all to any of the elementary activities right. of which there's probably abundant numbers that we don't haven't recognized in the policy. So I my suggestion would be that we alter the policy or send it back to the policy committee to alter the title maybe for uh, middle school and high school, Mount Anthony. And in that case, it might be a Mount Anthony policy and no. not even no. for us no. to deal with it. Okay. That's I agree. my concern about it. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, that makes a lot of sense, Dick. Um, and I particularly like the idea of if a, a title change or just taking it out of the SVSU entirely. Um, so I, I hear some, some the members of the pool. Yeah. The question about is does that, because sixth graders go to the middle school? Mm -hmm. 
But they're still elementary students? No, they're, they're sixth grade from Edison are MAU students. So, okay, so, so right. they're so, totally uh, considered separate? Mm -hmm. Well, we. There's one policy manual for all the SU, and there are, so this might be more of a title change, because there are policies in the policy manual that only refer to a certain school district. So if this applies only to that school district, then the title change could reflect that. But it would still be a policy of the SU. Okay. So let's, um, first of all, any other comments about this? before we put a motion on the floor? Okay. So in, in light of Dick's observation, um, I would like, I would entertain a motion for this to be sent back to the policy committee um, with that suggestion to change the title to, to indicate that this is a policy that affects middle and high school students and does not address elementary health. I would entertain that motion. So Thank you. Second. Thank you. That's okay. Any further conversation about that? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Okay, very good. So I, I'll email them the. Um, that's a great point, Dick. Thank you. And then we need to adopt policy 5185. This is um, this included some changes which we discussed when we came for uh, for a warning. Uh, could I have a? I would entertain a motion to approve to um, adopt rather a policy 5185, please. Thank you, Dick. Second. Thank you, Angie. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, adopting 5185, please sit saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none. Thank you very much. That motion passes. Okay. Um, so agenda item number five, a discussion on our governance model. <clears throat> so here we are, uh, two representatives from each of the sort of member districts that came into form uh, our current district. Um, we know there are there in terms of numbers of students in the different schools. We know that those numbers are, are big in terms of the populations of the towns that comprise the supervisory union. We know there are big differences there, uh, and so I think we ought to have a conversation as to what our governance model could look like. Um, this the governance model of this board is open to changes suggested from within, but it's also um, can be changed by a petition to get it on the ballot. So. It's entirely possible, for instance, that, that a, a member of the Bennington community, Bennington, the town of Bennington, could circulate a petition and get a question placed on the, ba on, on the ballot to change this governance model to a, um, to a representative sample, so, so that by population, for instance. Um, I don't know that that is a good idea, for instance. I, I, I personally would not be in favor of a governance model that, um, that allocated positions to this board based on town population. So I'm wondering if we, as a board, want to have a discussion and perhaps make a proposal to take action to change our governance structure so that maybe it allows for more equity based on population, but isn't entirely population driven. So my thoughts. Put it out there. Yeah, please. My thoughts are uh, under Act 46, we are now all united, and as far as I'm concerned, there's no more of you bigger than me. That was part of the Act 46. Sure. Uh, the State Board of Education said two people from each district, and I think it should stay that way. Okay. We are now looking at, we are all one unit. Mm -hmm. We are no longer anything bigger than us. Sure. Yeah, if I could piggyback on that, um, experience at the SVSU over 20-something years has said that even the smallest district has a say. Yeah. And people just, so agree with Cindy. And I would agree with Cindy too. Okay. So one of the things that has been suggested by just you know, folks talking about this is for us to adopt a hybrid model similar to how MAU does its business. And I'm wondering if there are, if there's uh, strengths to that, if there are, are deficits to that, if, it, if, it's, if that is worth bearing under consideration. Again, if nothing else, to sort of hedge against the idea of somebody else in the community putting forth an idea on a ballot and us being kind of forced into a governance model that I that I personally wouldn't would care. Um, the, the the hybrid model, as I understand it, is not, and I, I don't know the, the exact numbers. Maybe you can speak to that, Jim. But 
it, it, it takes into account the differences in population, but it, it is not balanced in such a way that just the Bennington people, the people who live in Bennington, can sort of rule the roots. It guarantees seats for every community, but it's not proportional. So yeah. that, uh, that, you know, and that's the model that uh, was originally proposed from the uh, study committee for Act 46 between them. Four for Bennington, two for Shaftesbury, two for Powell, and one for Woodford. And that was the original proposal that the, uh, went down when the vote went down, and when the vote went down with the public. And what we have now is the default articles that gives everybody to. I mean, if you're asking, like, you know, should this board take some action as a preemptive strike before a, you know, petition uh, is launched? Uh, the other thing that you need to consider is like, you know, we have also heard talk of a petition to once again visit merger with Mount Anthony. As okay. that was the original proposal that there's one district. I'm not but trying to I guess predict what any citizen petition would be is, Fair. is yeah. difficult. But so it's it's not just a situation that you're saying it could also be in the big other ones here. Yeah. Sure. If if there were a petition would it have to pass every town? So in anticipation of this, I, I asked our attorney that, <laughs> and because uh, I wanted to to be sure, I believe that you are now. It, it would have to pass every time for the merger was with Anthony, not Anthony, I believe. But to change your governance model, you are now a region, so it would be a composite of the whole vote of the region. In my understanding. Total it could vote. Be Total vote. So. If we decided to keep it 2-2-2, two, 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 and, and we all decided that and we voted on that, a petition still could be filed. Yes, could yes, it? Sure. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. it would give us right now, we'd say, okay, this is the way it is, but they still could do the petition. Someone could yeah. outside. Yeah, who, I mean, who knows if anyone actually will? Right, right, right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Um, okay, we could, we could um, if the board wished, and they could instruct me to have our attorney come back with what some scenarios look like, you know, and what that, you know, as I'm not speaking with the authority of, um, that I know for sure that that is a regional vote, but I'm pretty sure that's what I was told before. But if this board wishes, I could ask our attorney what the mechanics would look like and I could report back to you at the next meeting. I think that would be fine, uh, yeah, just yeah. simply so we know what it is that we're looking at. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Cindy, your point is well taken. Like, we, if this requires a shift in thinking uh, of how we have been thinking about things, yeah. and we are in this, we are in this together. And yeah. I, we've been told that right along. Yep, and then, yeah. that is the point we'll take for sure. So thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, anything else on, on discussion about our governance model? Okay. So next is the discussion of a district name, the Southwest Vermont Supervisory, uh, the Southwest Vermont Elementary Union District, Union Elementary District. It doesn't trickle off the tongue. Uh, and, and I'm wondering if, if no. simply to make our lives easier moving forward, if we want to adopt a different name. Um, one thought I had is for uh, board members, maybe even community members, to make recommendations and that we put it up to the students of our elementary schools to vote. Uh, or flip it around, have the elementary school students come up with different ideas for what they want their district to be called, and we pick one uh, of those. Um, you know, just to get a little bit of, of sort of their involvement and to let them know this is their district and we're doing this work on their behalf. Um, at the same time, we can stick with the SVUESD. It's a tongue twister. It sure is. It sure is. I, I uh, suggest we let the uh, the elementary children get involved. It might make them feel good. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, make, I'll make a suggestion. That I, I, I know our particularly our finance office is in a panic on this agenda item because we just finished registering this name mm -hmm. and all our all our bank accounts, our tax ID numbers, which is a process to get all of that. So if this is the desire of the board, and if you did have a petition from uh, citizens to change even you know, the merger to Mount Anthony, then your name would change again. Mm -hmm. So you could, as the chair, form an ad hoc committee of this committee to which in my definition of an ad hoc committee is one that expires when the work is done. Come back with a report of uh, what's all the implications of changing our name right now. Okay. Um, and 
report up and we, you know, we could tell you from the finance point of view what the work is in changing the name and we could vet the if the suggestion is to have the students do it, and I think that's a great suggestion, you know, what criteria we would set mm -hmm. for naming that and um, and what we you know, how we were gonna vote to judge and all that and then that committee could report back to the full committee. Jim, are you aware of what other New unified districts have done. I mean, it's it's in in the articles of agreement. It talks right. about how like these are temporary names. Yeah. You get to pick a better name for yourselves later on. Do you know how other districts have handled this? No, I don't. Because I, I can't to imagine look, we're the only one with an ugly no. name. I think no. probably there are lots of ugly <laughs> names that came about. I do know that one criticism on some of the names that changed is um, they don't identify where you are. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's you know this this name clearly identifies where we are in Vermont, but. Uh, some of the newer districts, the names, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we were in a meeting this morning and we we're like, now where, is, where is that district? And everyone was kind of Google it. So, I mean, that's that's not a criteria that they asked mm -hmm. to be identification, but it, it is, you know, it could be an issue. So, um, I, I would suggest that we put a little group together to study all the the, uh, the benefits and the okay. pitfalls of doing this. Okay. Uh, it in that to that idea. Um, anyone willing to, to serve on that committee? I imagine two people would be sufficient on that. Sure. Okay. And I'll I'll do that with you today. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the next agenda, item number seven. Uh, Participation of the Vermont School Board Association. So it seems to be a given that districts uh, pay dues to the Vermont School Board Association that it's it just it's assumed that that is what's going to happen. And so much of the fact that when I joined the school board three years ago ish, um, it, it came as a total surprise to me to know that we had an advocacy group that spoke to legislators and that had a voice in the state house and that we paid dues to that. It was not anything that I was aware of. It was not, as far as I understood, something that the board had taken action on to approve. Um, and as far as I'm aware, there have been different districts around the state, at least since I've been paying attention to school board matters, who have spoke out in vocal opposition to the v VSBA and their positions. So I didn't want us, as a new board, to move forward presuming that we were going to be doing this. Um, it may very well be that we decide that yes, that our participation with the VSBA is an important thing and a good thing, and we continue with that, and that's great. But I wanted to at least have give us the opportunity to have that conversation. Um, so I would open the floor to anyone who has any thoughts about that one way or the other. Do we know how much this this costs for this kind of a group emerged? Renee probably can look that number up for us right now, but Where's my understanding of this, and we went through this with North Brennington, if I'm correct, they bill us as an SU for participation in the Vermont School Board Association. So they're going to build the SU. The SU would have to vote to withdraw from the way their due structure is. They're going to bill us whether you, as a board, vote to bond or not because you're part of the SU. Okay. Uh, I mean, so to that, I, I, so what we can do as part of this conversation is to also perhaps take action. If we as a group decide we don't want that, we can ask our SU. Yes. We can ask our representatives in the supervisory union to make that motion at, in that setting. Um, but I think that's getting ahead of ourselves. I just wanted to talk about what value, I mean, we, we are all experienced board members, whether it's recent experience or experience in the past. And I just wonder what we think about this. We, we may not always agree with everything that any association has to say on on certain things but I know as a relatively new board member coming in and getting the packet that came from the Vermont School Board Association as a how to conduct yourself things that you should be mindful of um, that alone was helpful enough that it shows that there for me it shows that their intention is in the right place and again I may not agree with everything but um, I would be an advocate for staying the cost is already baked in. Mm -hmm. It's not going to save us much money, and I would be an advocate for staying in. Okay. Hey, what's Scott on that one? I just think uh, I agree. You know that packet and everything else that they gave us. And, and I, I haven't really seen any reason why we wouldn't want to be. Okay. There. Sure. Yeah. You know. Okay. Great. Good guys. 
So, all right, so so moving on. So we'll take no action on that. If, if we're happy with being part of that, then let's continue to do that. That's great. Um, and the last one sort of in this discussion about what we're going to look like, uh, agenda item number eight, format, schedule, and to my mind, most importantly, location. Um, it's difficult, I think, even for Bennington, people who live in the town of Bennington to come here for meetings. I think it's difficult even for people in the town of Bennington to make it to the middle school for meetings. Um, so I would not want our default meeting place to be here or the middle school. Um, precisely because, as Cindy pointed out, we're all in this together. I would propose that we adopt a, 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 a rotating place for us to have our, our board meetings. Um, within every month, we move towns, essentially. When it comes to Bennington, when we meet in the town of Bennington, we can nail down a spot for Bennington, whether it's here or the elementary schools. Uh, but I think it's important that we have a physical presence, even if it's twice a year, in Shaftesbury, in Pownall, in Woodford, in Bennington, that we all have get an opportunity to see these schools, to meet with those building principals, um, to see to give make it easier for, for parents to attend those meetings, make it easier for other community members, for teachers to attend those meetings. So that is one element of this conversation that I feel pretty strongly about where we meet. In terms of the day or the time, um, I'm finding that seven o'clock, a, a six or seven o'clock start time works better than works better than a five thirty start time. But we don't necessarily need to need to uh, go with that specifically. So I wanted to have a conversation with hopefully taking some action on this and setting it moving forward. So I'd open the floor to any kind of discussion, please. Angie, I see you. I already wrote down that I thought that we should go to every school, yeah. and if we did alphabetical order, we'd be at every school twice in one year. Yeah. And that way the principals would be there. And I only have one other commitment. I have Oak Hill on the third Tuesday of every month, so I couldn't do a third Tuesday. Okay. Um, this, this is when I'm, I'm missing Oak Hill tonight for being here. Mm -hmm. I just uh, gave the chair a list of when the other boards meet, and our recommendation is to stay out of the first week of the month. Uh, those members from Bennington know we never have the treasurer's report in the first week of the month. We do not have the attendance report in the first week of the month. Those in Powell and Shaftesbury are used to seeing those in here. We're, they've always been a month behind when, when we do Bennington. So if we can avoid the first week of the month and go to something, you know, uh, Shaftesbury used to meet on the second, second. Wednesday of the month. Um, at what, 6.30, was it? Yeah, 6.30. Yeah, 6.30. I think a Monday or Tuesday is better. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I think 6 o'clock is good. Yes. You're, you're tired so who said the I can't do th the third Tuesday. Oh, you can't yeah, do the third. I think, I think it's important to, to piggyback what you said. I mean, the presence, I mean, this is a unified right. elementary district. And in order to show that, being in every town, at every school, twice, even in Bennington, twice, I yeah. suggest that we go and, every and, school. And then, and then that way, that not only the principals, but the community members see us, they can come Absolutely. if they want to, we're there. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree, I think that's huge. I, I already agree. feel like out of whack a little bit from Pondham because right, I know what's right. really going on yeah. this like, past two weeks. Yeah. Sure. Well, we all knew this was a temporary I location because it was yeah. kind of the neutral zone until we figured mm -hmm. out where we were going. So, right. yeah. so it, uh, what I'm hearing is the second Tuesday uh, is the 6.30 start time. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. So six o'clock first. Uh, six o'clock second Tuesday. Does that sound doable for folks? Six. If we could do six thirty, I would prefer six thirty. It's a uh, working up in Arlington, okay. Sunderland. Getting down to Pownall by six is tough. Yep. And actually, and, and for that matter, with Jill working in, in Saratoga, I think six o'clock would be difficult for her as well. But I think six thirty would be doable. I with that. Uh, I'm used to my board members at 5:30, and we're out early. Okay. Just as long as we don't want to work eight, nine, for four o'clock in the morning, right. people. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I promise we will work till five. I mean, I don't know what to oh, say. All meetings used to be 11:30. Yeah. I guess. We'll cut that out. We'll try it. Oh, yes. 6:30, second yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. I know I'm like an outsider, but could I make a suggestion that the first meeting that you have 
in all your schools that you do like a half hour tour, get there and, and you know, start your meeting half an hour later so everybody can tour? Because I don't know if every board member has been in every school in, in, in our new, like in our new district. Yeah. Be a chance to see all your buildings. So we can, so I, I think this is where we are, and tell me if folks agree with us. So we, so I would entertain a motion to establish the meetings of this district, whatever we end up calling ourselves, but this district um, hold its monthly meetings on the second Tuesday of the month at 6.30 with, in a rotating, it, I guess, let's start there, let's start there. That, <laughs> I would entertain a motion to say that our established, that, that our monthly meetings of this school district board will be the second Tuesday of the month at 6.30. So moved. Okay. Thank you, Dick. Good. Second. Thank you very much, Tony. Uh, any further discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any one against? Any abstentions? Very good. So that passes. In terms of the location, um, uh, uh, let's take and Andrew's suggestion. Suggest that beginning in September 2019, we, we rotate our locations alphabetically through the several school buildings. Can I have a motion to that effect, please? Richard has written that down, I'm sure. So moved. Cool. Thank you, Angie. Can I have a second, so please? Thank Tony, any discussion on that? Any, okay, hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any against? Any abstentions? Great. Um, so wait a minute, well, I, I'd like the list. So it would be, if I did this correctly, wouldn't it be Ben L, Molly Stark, Monument, Pommel, Shaftesbury, Woodford? Did I miss anybody? You got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, just for clarity, uh, the next meeting of this board is going to be September 10th. That's the Tuesday. Yep, September 10th. At Ben L. At 6.30 at Bennett Elementary School. Um, we, for those of you who don't know, that'll be in the music room, but it'll be on the agenda. So the meeting will begin at 6.30, but I would invite members to, to arrive at 6 so that we can have a tour of the building. Yes. So, but, our, but, our state, but our meeting will not begin until 6.30. Right. See, we can see who able to come at six and then we can change it. Well, again, meeting at six. <laughs> you say September 10th? Uh, the 10th, yes. Meeting at six in, in Bennington is different than meeting at six in Powell or meeting at six in, in Shaftesbury. Like there's Very a, different. There's a difference. There's, you know, there's 40 minutes between Shaftesbury and Powell. Um, the way I drive, which is very safe. Yeah. Unless you're on the red line. Unless you're on the red line. Tony's got the siren. We'll call I have another question. <laughs> yes. If we're all elementary now. Are the principals going to be attending this meeting? The plan is that whoever building that is, that principal will come that way. With the others invited as well, but I think that's a fair expectation. So they're going to submit written reports each month, and then whoever's building that is will post them. No comment. Which is a weird comment in and of itself. But well, moving on. Wow. <laughs> no comment. Uh, so I, I think we've, we've established number eight. So that's great. Thanks for thanks for everyone thinking on that. Agenda item number nine. It's an update on the school resource officer request for proposal. So we will turn to Director Gordon. Uh, in the team. Yep. Yeah, included in the packet was the proposal. Um, Wasn't somebody supposed to come tonight? Wasn't the sheriff's department the police department? I don't know. I was. I, Just us. I flaked that last month or two months ago, if you recall. Mm -hmm. Nobody led the show. Um, I don't think they were supposed to come. I think, I think we had a discussion about it, but we said we had to go out for an RFP first. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then they would, then they would come, yeah. come and give their okay. presentation. Sorry. So, um, with the help of Karen and Bill, we job descriptions and job postings for school resource officers. Um, I tried to go through and kind of pull the highlights, high points um, out of those documents and, and put together this draft for your review and discussion. I don't know if there are points that you feel are missing, points that you feel should be added. Um, I would like to try to keep it as concise as possible. Somebody a 20 page document that they have to sit through and try to meet all the criteria. But, um, I guess the only one question I had in terms of the law enforcement agency requirements that is not included in there, and I wasn't sure if the board would want to require this, is if the SROs should be full time certified officers. So that is not in this current draft. 
Can, you, can you say more about that, please? I, I don't know the significance of that. Well, because you can be a part-time sheriff. That's what we right. mean, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Deputy. Part of my understanding of, of, of SROs in general was that there's a specific training that, it, that is included in this. It's not just law enforcement training, it's not just the police academy or the training the sheriffs go through. Is, is that a formalized training? And if so, I think that's important to include in the SRO RFP. So the, the full-time certifying, um, from my limited knowledge of it, is basically going to make it equivalent between any of the law enforcement agencies that could potentially be putting a proposal together. Um, the, the Bennington Police Department, the state troopers, and then some of the sheriffs are all full-time certified. I'm not aware of, um, other than the sheriff's office, if there are other uh, entities that actually employ part-time certified or if those entities require that all of their officers attend to the full-time academy. So in addition okay. to full-time, mm -hmm. they would also have to have the certification for school resource officers as well. Okay. And correct, there was a specific certification for that. Okay. So any other questions on this? My thought was just Considering the amount of money we're paying, we want somebody certified. We don't want somebody half certified. Yeah. Because we could get somebody off the street with a badge and pay him half the price. And he's not I, I believe when I talked to the sheriff's department about it, I believe that it is a full time officer. It's not a part time officer position. I believe. Don't right. quote yeah. me on it, but I believe that's what I understood. Is that and Renee and I both agree that it. I believe the recommendation I should give you that you should make it for a full-time officer in that, but that we should change this for you before we put it out. Probably put yes. it in there or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the one SRO that we currently have has you know full-time uh, training and certification. So to keep it standard. Okay. We're really not putting anybody in Woodford though, as it you know, indicates. It indicates that it would be split possibly between Could Monument be. and yep. So any other discussion about this? The other the other thing that I, I offer to the board is this is your opportunity to decide whether you want to move forward. This is one change. The individual boards voted for it, but this board has not. That's so true. you and you're the one issuing the RFP, so you know if you really should decide have a discussion do you want to well, issue the RFP, and, and not that's just the change. Yeah, that's an important point too, Jim. So I thought I thought last month we voted to move forward. We did. We, we did. did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. 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 Um, so I think where we're at is I would accept a motion to approve this RFP with the change of language to specify that we're looking for a fully certified law enforcement officer. So I would entertain that motion. Please. So moved. Yes, exactly. And then we'll call it. Cynthia, any further discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Um, Superintendent Culkeen or Director Gordon, do either of you have a sense of time frames around this? What, what are we looking at here? Best, weeks, best case scenario. Two weeks on the RFP, and then how quickly whoever bids on this, whether it's the sheriff or someone else, can get someone trained. Um, it's gonna be a little while. It's, it's a hunt. What our understanding is, the training is at least 100 hours that an officer has to go through, so what's that, two plus weeks? And I, I'm not sure how the, if the training is full time or it is part time, so I, I I don't see anybody in the building for a couple of months. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that. Um, okay. Agenda item 10, turning it over to you. Superintendent, which will give you a little cushion on what your budget is. Right, which is good. Um, first, I want to apologize for uh, any lapse of communication regarding uh, tonight's meeting, last, Friday's me last week's meeting. Hopefully, now that we have um, set a schedule, um, with the second Tuesday that uh, not only with board members but the public will will know when we meet, where we meet, and um, it'll be better for everyone. Um, 
A few educational items. Uh, last week we did a two-day administrative retreat. That was with all principals, vice principals, directors, assistant superintendent, director of finance, everyone um, who is an administrator in the SU. And uh, the topic over the two days was educational equity. And we also, because of the stress that our administrators deal with, and we know our teachers deal with stress and our staff deal with stress, and one of the things that we're trying to address is with that. So we, we also did a half day of mindfulness training with our administrators that hopefully can help everyone deal with the, the, the stress they're doing in their job. One thing that did come to light that we need to work, you know, we've been doing this with teachers, we did it now with the administrators, and this all comes from the work that you've heard us talk about Dave Melnick, he is a, the trauma-informed practices person who's been working with us for the past two years. Um, one employee group that we're missing is um, support staff, and we're going to have to address that. And by support staff, I'm not talking about the paraprofessionals, they are doing this, this training also, but um, our administrative assistants, receptionists, who are often the front line and brunt of student trauma and stress, and we want to help them deal with that too. So that'll be a, uh, the next focus. Uh, tomorrow at the middle school is the new teacher staff workshop. It's a day long event. We've been doing this for a number of years now. Start with a light continental breakfast, uh, and then uh, we invite all administrators to come and to do some HR. will be doing instruction, curriculum will be doing instruction. It's a pretty intense day, and uh, I think by last count we have 35 attendees, and it might even be more because there were some still committing today that they would that they were available to come. It's a critical uh, first step that we do with new t particularly new teachers, and the new teachers join a cohort group that meet once a month. Uh, they continue to meet throughout their first year. Uh, and being part of a cohort group as a new teacher, I think is critically important so that uh, you, know, you have a peer group as you go through those uh, struggles of a first year educator. And we also can monitor them uh, as well as their, along with their principals and give them guidance uh, whatever their struggles are in their classroom. Um, opening day uh, in all schools is uh, August 26th. That Monday is a school-based day, so it's just the staff returns, no students. Staff returns in their schools on the 26th. Um, on the 27th is the SVSU day, and that is at the middle school. Again, no students, but all staff return on that day and we all meet at the middle school. We have a presentation and a speaker and the speaker, the topic that we're dealing with, it goes along with the educational equity piece that we've been doing for most of the year. The topic uh, is equity but it's supporting LGBTQT is what the speaker is going to be addressing to the staff on the, mor on, uh, the morning of 827. Uh, and then all students uh, will return to school on um, the 28th of August. So that's the start of school for students. Um, not all positions have been filled uh, at this time. Right? You know, that's why you got two nomination forms this evening walked into you. It's that, it's that time of year. We hope that we'll get you know, resignations in the next two weeks. Uh, but we still have a few paraprofessionals and specialist positions that we are attempting to fill before school starts. And the other thing I want to talk to you about is this building. We've talked to you before that we are looking for alternatives to, to move out of here. And uh, it's something that Renee has been uh, pursuing uh, quite vigorously. One of the locations, though, uh, we learned this week is not really going to be available to us. We're considering a move out to Shields Drive, which is the uh, industrial park on the way up to the middle school. There's an empty facility there, and we could move some special education programs and the administration offices there. But uh, it doesn't appear that it's going to be a good mix as far as an industrial use in one half of the building and us in the other half. Um, and um, there was going to be considerable reconstruction uh, costs to make it a, a facility that we could put you know, students in, never mind staff. Once we go to uh, putting students in buildings, there's a whole other set of building codes that, you know, particularly about life protection that goes in. Um, 
We're still pursuing uh, looking at property on South Street in Bennington. Um, it is really not all the square footage that we need and may still result in the segregation that we have in this building, with some in the cellar and uh, some upstairs and not a lot of collegiate space. And just to repeat, why are we looking at this? It's not just, you know, we want new fancy digs or anything. I have serious concerns about our continued use of this building. Uh, there's no uh, handicap egress to, to the lower level. I mean, you, there is, but you have to drive outside, come around in a ramp, come back in. There's no bathroom on that level. Um, and uh, a few other issues with this building as it ages. And we are having a study, we, we're the process of a study is being done on the uh, feasibility of reuse of this building, particularly for uh, you know, Wendy Foreign, special ed director, is very interested in putting programs here. So the study we're having done is what it would cost to be able to put students back into this former school building so that uh, you know, and, and the biggest thing that this building is lacking is a sprinkler system. So that's one of the sprinkler system and an elevator would be one issue. And, but the study is also looking at maybe not using the basement floor for anything but storage and using uh, this for um, special education services, but it would still have to have a, a sprinkler system put in. So we're waiting, with, awaiting that report and uh, still pursuing South Street and other properties that may give us everything that we, that we need here. So if, if Wendy and her crew were to set up shop here, would it still be a matter of the SBSU paying rents and now this body? Because this body owns this yes, building. Just yes, yes. Right. Um, yes, the SU would be renting. What we're really looking at is not like to move Wendy and special education here. We're looking to like bring back some programs that we may be paying to send students out of the district, create right. our own, cut down on you know, the, the savings on transportation costs and out of district tuition. Uh, you know, could easily pay the rent to the new entity, sure. and, and and then some. Uh, plus, we we aren't putting students on a bus for right. an hour a day to go to. You know, we're sending students to uh, Rutland, Massachusetts, some to Brattleboro, it varies depending on what program and what student it is. So it's a lot of time lost in travel for uh, students who need services. And in terms of those students feeling of connectedness to their homes right. when they should, if we can do it here, we can, I just, it's easy, it's, it's a lot more complex than saying, right. we can do it here, we do it here, but if that said, if we can do it here, it's right. Okay. Any other questions for Superintendent Colby? Okay, very good. So uh, this is going to be uh, not as fulfilling a chair report as, as, as and hoped for. Um, first of all, we'll talk about the energy savings. We, at the last BSD meeting, we had a representative from the company who did the energy refit for the three BSD buildings. And he provided a, a, a big thick packet of all of the energy savings that have already been recognized for those three buildings. Uh, and one thing that I did not realize about that is that the systems that they put in place are so sophisticated that they can sort of fine tune themselves and the technicians who are a part of that can fine tune the systems to then increase the energy savings that are seen uh, month after month. And I, I, I want to share that with the board members here because I know that at least part of the conversation leading up to the merger and the creation of this district was, why should one district take on the, the debt incurred by the BSD? Um, and I, I just wanted to show that that was money well spent. And, and at this point, the savings are going to, toward paying this off, but look, eventually that's just going to be savings. And it's just going to be savings for the district and for the taxpayers in our communities, um, which is great. So I will, I, I will, I think what I'm going to do is ask Karen to bring to, to send out copies of that because it's a big packet, probably too much to be scanned and emailed. Um, in terms of committee assignments, uh, the folder that I had planned to bring, I did not bring. So what I will do this evening is to email the email each of the board members here which committees they're serving on. Some board members got back to me and said these are the committees I'd like to. Others did not. Um, so those folks will hopefully go with what they've been volunteered to do. And I will ask that Frank or that someone else here post those on the website right away. Um, so that the public knows where they're going. But as of tonight, you will all know, and I will also reach out to the chairs of those committees that people are serving on. I don't want to take a guess because I, I wrote it down and I don't want to guess. So you pick them? So the, so the committee, so we had talked, so I, I make the committee assignments. Um, I had asked, I think three months ago at this point, that those folks who had an interest in serving on certain committees to let me know. Um, and there were some people who let me know and some people who, who I didn't hear from on that particular issue. 
Um, well, you know, I'm on the ESU. Well, and those are elected positions. That's right. an elected yes. position. The regular like negotiations is appointed by the chair. Right? Policy, yeah. food, and uh, like the, the 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 food committee, like uh, technology committee, like those are the different committees that we should have representation. on. Just from the SU consideration, I mean, we've already we're due to select people for committee assignments, but um, some of our work, like policy, we were going to continue through the year as we had it, and if you're already on. Personnel or what I forget what you policy. Mean. But um, essentially, it's the committee. You don't have to have a separate committee assignment from here, as far as I can tell, as you're already on the SU because everybody here is part of the SU. Am I correct about that? Well, so you may have too many. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so, for, so, Angie, you were representing uh, Powell, mm -hmm. uh, right? But the Powell district doesn't exist anymore. You were representing Powell on the policy committee at the same time that I was representing the BSD mm -hmm. on the policy committee. Our district doesn't get representatives from each of the towns anymore. It's just representatives right. from. The you were on it. I was on it. Right. Yeah. So right. So we were on it. So if we yeah, all continued with those assignments, we right. we would have too many people. Um, so, so how many did MAU have on the policy? One. I don't know about MAU. Yeah. I'm just think thinking what that you know, at this point. What is that? committee look like? Then? Which would it be three people, one from the SU, well. one from the MAU, and one from the elementary union? I guess where I'm going is that we, we didn't have an overflow, overabundance of committee members on policy and certainly not on superintendent evaluation. And so we're, we're looking at committees with 10 or 11 people at most of them. We always think that's workable through our history. I think a committee with three people is a bad idea. Okay. Has this but, has this been addressed at the SVSU no, level? It's not. But it's, as it's mentioned here, yeah. as we just walked through this, it, it does. This is one of those learning curve things with the merged districts mm -hmm. that we're going to probably have to address. What it would have been coming up. That's right. Three this, members is not this a yes. good number. And you're going to lose potentially. You'd lose three members right now off the of policy. You right. only right. pick one. Right. There's four of us that are on it right now. Right. Yeah. And, and I did not I did not give consideration to the larger SU implications of this. I just gave consideration to our representation on those committees. And I said this all along from the beginning before we even emerged. I just don't know how eight people are going to be able to do everything. Mm -hmm. I but, figured somebody would do most of it. Yeah, <laughs> but you won't have a second meeting. Of, if you're on the policy committee, you won't have two meetings for policy. No, you don't have one. Yeah, you just have one, even though you're a member of this board and SU, you still only have that one meeting. So. Yeah. I don't think your work doubles, I guess, is where you're going. Yeah, okay. Yep, right. Walker? Yeah. <laughs> so I, 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 suppose, I suppose it makes sense then for, does the SU, does the, the SVSU board want to have this conversation and then we can use their conversation to inform our own conversation about this. Mm -hmm. I yeah, think it that. To, I think it has to. I think it has to. Yeah. Yeah. I think maybe we need, or we get all three board chairs together okay. and have that discussion of what these committees should look like. And I, I don't think we have a policy on forming committees, but I will, like that may, and then that would have you know, like, how, and that's why I asked. We have a policy that says like each board got one member um, to a, a standing committee, like say negotiations, and um, you know, three people on negotiations would be tough because right. you know you need a quorum. Well, the whole least. the whole thing may not there may not need to be as many committees, right? right? I mean, right. It, you could have multiple people from the three boards who are handling maybe what three committees are doing, mm -hmm. but that's that's got to be led with, with you and the yeah. SU coming back to us saying this is what we need. So we'll definitely we'll put it on the SU agenda, but before that, um, I'll convene meeting the three board chairs yeah. and we can, because it's... Does it need to be four? Do we need North Bennington as part of that conversation? Um, yeah, because they are right. part of the SU. SU. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, it's... 
And they're going to be impacted again, possibly in November, if Arlington and um, Sandgate vote to, and they, they know earlier than November 15th is what it says in the language, they can join this board, even though they're not going to be, we're not going to be operational with them until July of 2021. The state board uh, action allows some of the vote members supposed to contain themselves to voting on articles of merger, but mm -hmm. we may have three more board members uh, after November 15th. Okay. Maybe we'll talk about government's bond. <laughs> I'm sure there are more than four people in the same game. That's all I can think of. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So I guess with this in mind, um, uh, we will. I, we will not make official uh, appointments to, to the committees. No. Um, so we'll wait to hear from you, Jim, in terms of uh, the board chairs, and yeah. we'll figure it out from there. Um, who's the chair of the North Bennington uh, Prudential Committee? Rain no, no. Okay, of course, of course. Okay. Um, all right. Well, then that simplifies that. So back to our agenda. We're just left with the FYI, which is the student enrollments uh, information, um, the budget status report, and then the nomination forms, which we covered already. So. With our agenda I exhausted, yes. Just have one thing. At my Oak Hill meeting last month, because they take on um, students for pre K, they're asking that anything that we get from the health department be forwarded on to them because they have um, supervisory union children mm -hmm. and they're not getting the information. So I would recommend that any center that has the pre K in it gets that information from the health department. Did you guys get it? Yep. And it doesn't get forwarded on. So who would I talk to? Me. Okay. Yeah, I will. I'm sure the, there's more than just who killed that. I will keep the kid up at our early child director, and you know they're one of our partners. Correct? Right. Yeah. Yes. So, all right. And they're not getting the information on the health, on the immunization, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And okay. she was asking if she could get if it comes out anything new that they get forwarded to it. Okay. Great. Thank you. Very good. Uh, so before I would entertain a motion to end the meeting, I just want to point out that this was not a three-hour meeting like you were afraid of. So we, we'll, not this, we'll get this done. We, we, know we can have those things. if you want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, can we just have a motion to adjourn? So, so moved. We'll, we'll, so call moved. It, Dick, we'll call Angie. Any discussion on adjourning? All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, and we are adjourned. Thank I you can't very much.